According to https colon slash slash iep dot utm dot edu slash literary slash colon. Literary theory is the body of ideas and methods we use in the practical reading of literature. By literary theory we refer not to the meaning of a work of literature but to the theories that reveal what literature can mean. Literary theory is a description of the underlying principles, one might say the tools, by which we attempt to understand literature. All literary interpretation draws on a basis in theory but can serve as a justification for very different kinds of critical activity. It is literary theory that formulates the relationship between author and work. Literary theory develops the significance of race, class, and gender for literary study, both from the standpoint of the biography of the author and an analysis of their thematic presence within texts. Literary theory offers varying approaches for understanding the role of historical context in interpretation as well as the relevance of linguistic and unconscious elements of the text. Literary theorists trace the history and evolution of the different genres, narrative, dramatic, lyric, in addition to the more recent emergence of the novel and the short story, while also investigating the importance of formal elements of literary structure. Lastly, literary theory in recent years has sought to explain the degree to which the text is more the product of a culture than an individual author and in turn how those texts help to create the culture. Broadly speaking, literary theory is the systematic study of the nature of literature and of the methods for literary analysis. Since the 19th century, literary scholarship includes literary theory and considerations of intellectual history, moral philosophy, social prophecy, and interdisciplinary themes relevant to how people interpret meaning. In the humanities and modern academia, the latter style of literary scholarship is an offshoot of post-structuralism. Consequently, the word theory became an umbrella term for scholarly approaches to reading texts, some of which are informed by strands of semiotics, cultural studies, philosophy of language, and continental philosophy. The practice of literary theory became a profession in the 20th century, but it has historical roots that run as far back as ancient Greece. Aristotle's Poetics is an often cited early example ancient India, Bharata Muni's Natya Shastra, and ancient Rome, Longinus's On the Sublime. In medieval times, scholars in the Middle East, al Jahiz's al Bayan Wa, al Tabian and al Hayawan, and Ibn al Mutaz's Kitab al Badi in Europe four continued to produce works based on literary studies. The aesthetic theories of philosophers from ancient philosophy through the 18th and 19th centuries are important influences on current literary study. The theory and criticism of literature are tied to the history of literature. However, the modern sense of literary theory only dates to approximately the 1950s when the structuralist linguistics of Ferdinand de Saussure began to strongly influence English language literary criticism. The new critics and various European influenced formalists, particularly the Russian formalists, had described some of their more abstract efforts as theoretical as well. But it was not until the broad impact of structuralism began to be felt in the English speaking academic world that literary theory was thought of as a unified domain. In the academic world of the United Kingdom and the United States, literary theory was at its most popular from the late 1960s when its influence was beginning to spread outward from elite universities such as Johns Hopkins, Yale, and Cornell through the 1980s by which time it was taught nearly everywhere in some form citation needed during this span of time. Literary theory was perceived as academically cutting edge and most university literature departments sought to teach and study theory and incorporate it into their curricula. Because of its meteoric rise in popularity and the difficult language of its key texts, theory was also often criticized as faddish or trendy obscurantism, and many academic satire novels of the period, such as those by David Lodge, feature theory prominently. Some scholars, both theoretical and anti-theoretical, refer to the 1980s and 1990s debates on the academic merits of theory as the theory wars. By the early 1990s, the popularity of theory as a subject of interest by itself was declining slightly along with job openings for pure theorists, 
even as the texts of literary theory were incorporated into the study of almost all literature. By 2010, the controversy over the use of theory in literary studies had quieted down, and discussions on the topic within literary and cultural studies tend now to be considerably milder and less lively. However, some scholars like Mark Bauerlein continue to argue that less capable theorists have abandoned proven methods of epistemology, resulting in persistent lapses in learning, research, and evaluation. Some scholars do draw heavily on theory in their work, while others only mention it in passing or not at all, but it is an acknowledged, important part of the study of literature. One of the fundamental questions of literary theory is, what is literature? Although many contemporary theorists and literary scholars believe either that literature cannot be defined or that it can refer to any use of language. Specific theories are distinguished not only by their methods and conclusions, but even by how they create meaning in a text. However, some theorists acknowledge that these texts do not have a singular, fixed meaning which is deemed correct. Since theorists of literature often draw on a very heterogeneous tradition of continental philosophy and the philosophy of language, any classification of their approaches is only an approximation. There are many types of literary theory, which take different approaches to texts. Even among those listed below, many scholars combine methods from more than one of these approaches, for instance, the deconstructive approach of Paul de Man drew on a long tradition of close reading pioneered by the new critics, and de Man was trained in the European hermeneutic tradition. Broad schools of theory that have historically been important include historical and biographical criticism, new criticism, formalism, Russian formalism, and structuralism, post-structuralism, Marxism, feminism and French feminism, post-colonialism, new historicism, deconstruction, reader response criticism, and psychoanalytic criticism. The different interpretive and epistemological perspectives of different schools of theory often arise from, and so give support to, different moral and political commitments. For instance, the work of the new critics often contained an implicit moral dimension, and sometimes even a religious one. A new critic might read a poem by T.S. Eliot or Gerard Manley Hopkins for its degree of honesty in expressing the torment and contradiction of a serious search for belief in the modern world. Meanwhile, a Marxist critic might find such judgments merely ideological rather than critical. The Marxist would say that the new critical reading did not keep enough critical distance from the poem's religious stance to be able to understand it. Citation needed or a post-structuralist critic might simply avoid the issue by understanding the religious meaning of a poem as an allegory of meaning, treating the poem's references to God by discussing their referential nature rather than what they refer to. Such a disagreement cannot be easily resolved, because it is inherent in the radically different terms and goals, that is, the theories, of the critics. Their theories of reading derive from vastly different intellectual traditions. The new critic bases his work on an East Coast American scholarly and religious tradition, while the Marxist derives his thought from a body of critical social and economic thought, the post-structuralist's work emerges from 20th century continental philosophy of language. In the late 1950s, the Canadian literary critic Northrop Frye attempted to establish an approach for reconciling historical criticism and new criticism while addressing concerns of early reader response and numerous psychological and social approaches. His approach, laid out in his Anatomy of Criticism, was explicitly structuralist, relying on the assumption of an intertextual, order of words, and universality of certain structural types. His approach held sway in English literature programs for several decades but lost favor during the ascendance of post-structuralism. For some theories of literature, especially certain kinds of formalism, the distinction between literary and other sorts of texts is of paramount importance. Other schools particularly post-structuralism in its various forms. New historicism, deconstruction, some strains of Marxism and feminism have sought to break down distinctions between the two and have applied the tools of textual interpretation to a wide range of texts, including film, nonfiction, historical writing, and even cultural events. Mikhail Bakhtin argued that the 
utter inadequacy, of literary theory is evident when it is forced to deal with the novel. While other genres are fairly stabilized, the novel is still developing. 8. Another crucial distinction among the various theories of literary interpretation is intentionality, the amount of weight given to the author's own opinions about and intentions for a work. For most pre-20th century approaches, the author's intentions are a guiding factor and an important determiner of the correct interpretation of texts. The new criticism was the first school to disavow the role of the author in interpreting texts, preferring to focus on the text itself in a close reading. In fact, as much contention as there is between formalism and later schools, they share the tenet that the author's interpretation of a work is no more inherently meaningful than any other. Listed below are some of the most commonly identified schools of literary theory, along with their major authors. Aestheticism associated with Romanticism, a philosophy defining aesthetic value is the primary goal in understanding literature. This includes both literary critics who have tried to understand and or identify aesthetic values and those like Oscar Wilde who have stressed art for art's sake. Oscar Wilde, Walter Pater, Harold Bloom African American Literary Theory American Pragmatism and Other American Approaches Harold Bloom, Stanley Fish, Richard Rorty Cognitive literary theory applies research in cognitive science and philosophy of mind to the study of literature and culture. Frederick Louis Aldama, Mary Thomas Crane, Nancy S. Turlin, William Flesh, David Herman, Suzanne Keane, Patrick Colm Hogan, Alan Richardson, Ellen Spolsky, Blakey Vermeule, Lisa Zunchin. Cambridge Criticism Close Examination of the Literary Text and the Relation of Literature to Social Issues I. A. Richards, F. R. Levis, Q. D. Levis, William Empson Critical Race Theory Cultural Studies emphasizes the role of literature in everyday life Raymond Williams, Dick Hebdige, and Stuart Hall British Cultural Studies, Max Horkheimer and Theodore Adorno Michel de Certeau, also Paul Gilroy, John Guillory. Dark Side of the Rainbow A strategy of analyzing works with the accompaniment of music and finding and extrapolating thematic similarities between the two, named after a popular practice that came about in the 1970s. Darwinian Literary Studies situates literature in the context of evolution and natural selection. Deconstruction A strategy of Close, reading that elicits the ways that key terms and concepts may be paradoxical or self-undermining, rendering their meaning undecidable Jacques Derrida, Paul de Man, J. Hillis Miller, Philippe Lacoule Barth, Gayatri Spivak, Avital. Ronell. Descriptive Poetics. Brian McHale. Feminist Literary Criticism. Eco-criticism explores cultural connections and human relationships to the natural world. Gender, see Feminist Literary Criticism, which emphasizes themes of gender relations. Luce Irigare, Judith Butler, Ellen Sixis, Julia Kristeva, Elaine Scholter. Formalism a school of literary criticism and literary theory having mainly to do with structural purposes of a particular text. German Hermeneutics and Philology. Friedrich Schleiermacher, Wilhelm Dilthey, Hans Georg Gadamer, Eric Auerbach, Rene Wellack. Marxism, see Marxist literary criticism, which emphasizes themes of class conflict. Georg Lukacs, Valentin Voloshinov, Raymond Williams, Terry Eagleton, Frederick Jameson, Theodor Adorno, Walter Benjamin. Narratology. New criticism looks at literary works on the basis of what is written, and not at the goals of the author or biographical issues. W. K. Wimsett, F. R. Levis, John Crow Ransom, Cleanth Brooks, Robert Penn Warren. New historicism which examines the work through its historical context and seeks to understand cultural and intellectual history through literature Stephen Greenblatt, Louis Montrose, Jonathan Goldberg, H. R. Ramvieser. 
Postcolonialism focuses on the influences of colonialism in literature, especially regarding the historical conflict resulting from the exploitation of less developed countries and indigenous peoples by Western nations. Edward Said, Gayatri Chakravorty Spivak, Homi Baba and Declan Kybert. Postmodernism criticism of the conditions present in the 20th century, often with concern for those viewed as social deviants or the other. Michel Foucault, Roland Barthes, Giles Deleuze, Felix Guattari and Maurice Blanchot. Post-structuralism a catch-all term for various theoretical approaches, such as deconstruction, that criticize or go beyond structuralism's aspirations to create a rational science of culture by extrapolating the model of linguistics to other discursive and aesthetic formations. Roland Barthes, Michel Foucault, Julia Kristeva. Psychoanalysis, see psychoanalytic literary criticism, explores the role of consciousnesses and the unconscious in literature including that of the author, reader, and characters in the text Sigmund Freud, Jacques Lacan, Harold Bloom, Slavoj Žižek, Victor Tausk. Queer theory examines, questions, and criticizes the role of gender identity and sexuality in literature. Judith Butler, Eve Kosofsky Sedgwick, Michel Foucault. Reader response criticism focuses upon the active response of the reader to a text. Louise Rosenblatt, Wolfgang Eiser, Norman Holland, Hans Robert Haas, Stuart Hall. Realist. James Wood. Russian formalism. Viktor Sklavsky, Vladimir Propp. Structuralism and semiotics see semiotic literary criticism examines the universal underlying structures in a text, the linguistic units in a text and how the author conveys meaning through any structures. Ferdinand de Saussure, Roman Jakobsen, Claude Lévi-Strauss, Roland Barthes, Mikhail Bakhtin, Yuri Lotman, Umberto Eco, Jacques Ehrman, Northrop Fry and Morphology of Folklore Other Theorists, Robert Graves, Alamgir Hashmi, John Sutherland, Leslie Fiedler, Kenneth Burke. Paul Benicu, Barbara Johnson, Blanca de Lizor.